After watching this video, you will never look at fair value gaps the same way. In this video, I'll give you 5 fair value gap secrets or in other words, 5 uses of fair value gaps that you might never use in this way and why you should use them instead of order block, order flow, reversal, high probability liquidity sweeps and much more that we're gonna cover today. Make sure not to skip the fourth one as it's the most important one for me and I make the most money of it. If anyone needs a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, check out the description. This is Molham and let's get into it. So first thing first, Fair Valley Gap can tell you where price is heading to or where price is going to. In other words, it can tell you where the draw on liquidity is. And we know that from the video of the draw on liquidity, you 100% should watch that video. We know that price goes from external to internal and internal to external. So when price goes and takes the external, now we're expecting price to go to the internal. And what is the internal? It's fair value gap. And in this case, we have this fair value gap right here. There is this one. And there is this one right here. So those are the three fair value gaps that we can expect price reacting from. There is one right here. But for now, this is kind of too far. We're going to be focusing on those ones. And we can see that price simply goes to the first one here and small reaction. And then where's the next drawn liquidity? It's this one. And we can see that price comes here. Now, in order to know where price is going to react from, make sure to stay until the fourth one. As I'll explain, how do you find the high probability liquidity sweep using fair value gaps? Now price goes up and where do we expect price? Maybe it's going to react from here, maybe from here. And we keep going and we can see that price comes here, till this one and comes here also. So for any reason, if you enter somewhere in here, your first target is going to be this fair value gap. Second target is this fair value gap. And you can be looking for setups at those fair value gaps. So this one failed. Okay. Now the second one right here. And we can see that price started to go lower. Now the same thing that we can apply here. Price started to go lower. So price take this external. Came lower. We have this internal fair value gap right here. And price basically comes to the fair value gap. So fair value gap can tell you where price is going to go to. We have this fair value gap here. This fair value gap. So we know that price is going to come to here and maybe go lower. Why? Because we already have this external. So we're going to go to the internal either this one or this one and we're gonna come lower so if i play we see that price comes to the first fair value gap nice rejection from there and then this is the current price action and we are at the second fair value gap so what are we expecting now price to come lower that's how we use the external to internal internal to external and we use fair value gaps to see where our draw in liquidity is basically fair value gap tell us where the market is gonna go you can also use the weekly, monthly, daily fair value gaps. Those are very high probability ones. Now, the second use of a fair value gap is that fair value gap can tell you if you are in the right direction of the market. It can give you hints that, okay, you are in the right direction and price will go to that direction. Basically, it will tell you if you are with the order flow or against the order flow. How is that? You see how we have this lender session right here. And actually, this is yesterday's price action. So I was looking at this and I noticed this happening. What do we have here? This is the lender session right here. Price took the low of the lender session, started to go up. We noticed that we have this fair value gap right here. What happened to this? This fair value gap gets respected. A very small closure below and then price started to go up. Now, what do we have here? Another fair value gap created after this fair value gap created and respected. What happened to the second one? Price doesn't close below it. So basically it was respected. Price started to go up. There is nothing as of now, no other fair value gap. More retracement again into the fair value gap, respecting the fair value gap. Going up, what do we have? Another fair value gap created here. What happened to this fair value gap? It gets also respected. A small closure also again, but then price still goes up. And you see that it goes on and on. So when you see fair value gaps getting respected, know that you are in the right direction or you are with the order flow. Otherwise, if something like this happened, you were going long, entered from this fair value gap, price went up, came lower, went up, and at this point, 
price went lower. There was a fair value gap here, and you're going long, right? There is a fair value gap right here, and this fair value gap gets respected. Go lower. That's the first sign that, okay, maybe I'm against the order flow now. Now, another fair value gap here gets respected, went lower. Right here, you would know that now the order flow is against you. So that's a sign from the fair value gaps that tells you, okay, you are against the order flow. Now you got to get out of the trade. What do we see here? Price started to go up. All of the bearish fair value gaps are getting violated, disrespected, and all of the bullish fair value gaps are getting respected. What do we see here? Another fair value gap and totally respected. Price started to go up. Another fair value gap. Price started to go up. You see? Whenever we have a fair value gap that is not respected, then we can expect a reversal in the market or at least a retracement or a temporary change in the direction of the market. And if we move to the left right here, what do we see? So at this point of the price action, this fair value gap was holding, right? Holding right here. And after some time right here, price actually disrespect this fair value gap with a big body closure. And then since then, price started to go lower. You see, so now price starting to go lower. The moment that you see the bullish fair value gaps are not getting respected, but the bearish fair value gaps are getting respected. At that time, you know that, okay, the market might be reversing at you. You see right here, fair value gap right here, holding, price went up. What do we have here? Fair value gap, but a bearish one in this case, holding right here. And then the same thing here. Another fair value gap created after respecting this fair value gap. And then the same here. Fair value gap getting respected. At this point, you know that you are against the direction. And you see, and you see it goes on and on right here. Another fair value gap that is respected. And also with the wick, price started to go lower. That's how you know you are with the order flow against the order flow. Fair value gap can tell you the whole story. The third thing that you can do is replace order blocks with fair value gaps so you miss list entries. A lot of you guys are using order blocks and there is nothing wrong with it. But you also complain about missing entries that okay price doesn't come to your point of interest which is the order block and it only comes to the fair value gap. And why is this? If we look at the TDRA matrix here. So this is premium, discount. What do we have on either premium and discount? We have old high low rejection block bearish bullish order block fair value gap liquidity void breaker block and mitigation block all of those stuff right here i'll mainly focus on the order block fair value gap and breaker block now let's consider this price action right here right and we have premium discount so this is the 50 percent a lot of time price wants to retraces mostly it's going to only come to the fair value gap not every time it's going to go to the order block so you're Extreme order block might be somewhere in here. Not every time price will come to the order block. Most of the time, price will just come to the fair value gap and will start to go up. Why? Because price, and most of the time, that's when price wants to just go up faster, right? It's only going to go to the nearest point of interest, which is in this case the fair value gap. Not every time it goes to the order block. So if you want to miss list entries, then focus on fair value gaps other than order blocks. Now, a lot of times you will also be missing trades. Why? Because sometimes we have fair value gap aligning with another TD array from here, for example, and mostly the old breaker block. When they are aligning with each other, somewhere like this, right? We have fair value gap and breaker block, and they're overlapping with each other. Mostly the order block will not be tested. No, price will just come here and it will start to go up. And there are sometimes also, and that's a mistake people do price will come to the fair value gap it will go up it will take the main liquidity level and that's a mistake a lot of people do and i really want you guys to realize this you're making this big mistake so it takes the main liquidity level start to go lower and then start to create some bearish structure and a lot of people you know the fair value gap is already respected liquidity is taken so everyone who entered from the fair value gap got the profit liquidity level is taken the main one price starting to create a bearish structure and now people are waiting for this order block to work it's not gonna work 
price will just go lower. Why? Because the main liquidity level or the major one is already taken. Price creating and starting another structure to the downside. And now price is going just lower. So this order block will not work if the main liquidity levels are already taken. A lot of you guys don't realize this. And you guys make this mistake. So use fair value gaps. And this is my favorite period rate. Use it instead of the order block and you'll miss list trades. You will get more profits. Now the fourth use comes here and it is my most useful one. And the one that I use the most. It's basically looking for high probability liquidity sweeps or liquidity grab, whatever you call it, by using fair value gaps. How is this? We have a lot of variations here and I can make a whole video about this or a whole course about this. It's going to take a lot of time to go in details. But mainly, either this scenario where we have price going up, coming lower, creating a low, going up, fail to displace more. We have a fair value gap here. We have a low here. This low right here, this fair value gap equals liquidity sweep, right? So liquidity sweeps, fair value gap low, what's going to happen is this. Price will come here, go up. So when you have this kind of formation here, a low and a fair value gap below it, that's a high probability liquidity sweep. The same thing, price going up, coming lower, going up. Price partially filled the fair value gap, but the fair value gap is kind of big. Price failed to displace more. What's going to happen is price needs a fuel from the market. Looking at this low, there is a high probability liquidity sweep here. So price comes here, go up. The same thing also, another variation. This is all using fair value gaps and a lot of other variations that I might be doing a whole video about. A lot of secrets when it comes to the liquidity sweep. This is my thing. When I learned ICT, this is my main focus. This is my area of expertise. I always focus on the liquidity sweep and by backtesting for long times, I realized a lot of things. I figured out a lot of things. And another thing is this. We have a fair value gap, big one. And even on the lower time frame, so let's say this is a four hour fair value gap, going to the 15 minutes, we see price coming inside, going up, coming lower. This is a liquidity sweep inside of a higher time frame fair value gap. That's a higher probability liquidity sweep. So price can come again here, go up. So that's going to be the high probability liquidity sweep right here. I always look for this when evaluating my liquidity sweep or is it a high probability is it a low probability is it eight out of ten is it five out of ten so you know the evaluation process relies on the fair value gap almost 80 percent let's go over this as an example so what do we have here this is euro dollar and we can see that price created a fair value gap here and i'm gonna be marking this fair value gap and i'll be waiting for a sweep either inside of this fair value gap because I don't have a low inside of the fair value gap here. So what you can do is go to the 15 minutes and we can see that this is the fair value gap. You can basically look for a sweep of a low inside of this fair value gap and then go up, right? So the moment that price goes to the, so price comes to the fair value gap and there is a sweep right here of the previous London low. This is a high probability one and price will keep going up from here most likely now what is another thing that you see how this low is protected now price never touch it and started to go up what i want you to see here is this because price is fractal even right here we can see that there was a sweep into what a sweep of a low with the wick inside of a fair value gap even in the lower time frame a very small fair value gap here that's where price react from after sweeping this low. This is the first scenario that I mentioned about when we have a low and we have a fair value gap below it. Very nice liquidity sweep. Now let's go to the four hour again and see what happens. So price basically sweeps here, started to go up, go up and break structure, right? So we are in a buy program because price is respecting this order block going up. So Mostly we're going up. What happened is that, okay, there is a low and there is a small fair value gap. So you might be looking for something in here. What happens now, okay, there is a low that immediately fills the fair value gap partially, not even to the 50% and then goes up. 
So now if I see some weakness on the price, basically if I see price slightly coming lower, what does that mean? That means the market is running out of fuel and it needs to take some liquidity because it's going up. You gotta come down, take some liquidity and goes up. It's basically the fuel of the market. We know that markets are liquidity driven. So now this is our liquidity level. And what do we have below it? A fair value gap. This low is inside of the fair value gap. Most of the highs or lows inside of fair value gaps has a potential of a liquidity sweep. So right here, we'll be marking this as a liquidity sweep. And we can see that price started to go lower. So that's a good thing for us. Going lower. And then taking the liquidity level going up immediately. And then price started to go up. You see? Very nice liquidity sweep. If you go to the 15 minutes here, look at what do we have? You could even see it right here. This is the previous New York low. And what do we have below it? The same thing as I said, price is fractal. If you don't see those stuff, you're gonna be behind. If you see them, you'll feel much, much, much better. What do we see here? A low. And this one is also taken. And you see the respect right here? Price never closes below it. And what do we have below this low? Below this one. Very small unfilled part of the fair value gap. And that's where price comes to. There is also another one right here, but just below it. You know, two fair value gaps in a row. That's where price comes to, goes up. And all of this is part of the four hour fair value gap. This is the unfilled part of the fair value gap. This is the low that is inside of the fair value gap. It gets taken. Another low right here. We have two fair value gaps below it. That's where price comes to and goes up. This is also the low of the previous London low. So we have the time-based liquidity levels and we have the dynamic ones, which are those ones. That's how you become better than most of the people that, that are thinking about patterns when it comes to the SMC or YCT. They're only thinking about, okay, liquidity sweep, price goes up, market starts to shift, we enter from here. You got to think in this way. You got to look for the quality over the quantity. You see here, those setups, if you see them, you take them with no doubt. And we are at number five now, and it's the last use or hack of fair value gaps, and it is the indication of a market structure shift. So this is a continuation of the second use, which was the order flow. So basically, price respecting fair value gaps is telling you that you are with the order flow. And what is the total opposite of this? It's basically disrespecting fair value gaps. And what does that indicate? It indicates a market structure shift. So if we have, in this case, price going up, coming lower, going up, and we have a fair value gap right here, and we had a sweep. If this is a singular fair value gap, and if it is not, you go to the higher time frame, you wait, you look for a singular fair value gap, closing below this fair value gap, it indicates a market structure shift. And if you want more details on this, I have a full strategy only relying on this, the inverse fair value gap. Price closing below this fair value gap, indicating a market structure shift. A lot of people would be waiting for price to come here, but this is the first sign that price is gonna go lower. What do we see here in this chart? Basically, price is going up, fair value gap, respected, which means that price is going up, and then between five and seven, there was a sweep of the London high, just right here. We go and we look before the sweep happens. Do we have a singular fair value gap that is disrespected? And we can see. So no singular fair value gap, nothing here, you know, no fair value gaps except this one right here. So this is the only fair value gap that we have. This fair value gap, if a candle closes below it, that means we are most likely going lower now. So there is an early indication of a market structure shift. Now, a lot of people would be looking either at this last pullback or at this last fractal low for a market structure shift. And it worked in this case, but in a lot of cases, it's not going to work as good as this. Sometime you would be entering from the inverse fair value gap and then price will go lower. It's not going to give you that retracement and it's just going to keep going lower. What do we have here? So this inverse fair value gap is disrespected right here at this candle. Price closes below it. Price comes back to the inverse fair value gap, doesn't close above it, started to go lower. This candle itself, it tells you that there is a market structure shift. 
just by this candle and just by using this fair value gap. And what happens after? We have no fair value gaps, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then displacement with a fair value gap. This fair value gap later gets respected. Price doesn't close out of it in a very clean way right here. Another example right here. And this thing works in all time frames. So I give you an example on the 15 minutes. Now I'm going to go to the weekly. Or if you want me to go, I'm going to go to the monthly, whatever time frame. What do we have here? Price is going lower, lower lows, right? All the way here. And what happens here? You see all of the fair value gaps are being respected. A fair value gap here, respected. Another fair value gap right here, also respected. Actually right here, respected. Another fair value gap right here and also respected. Now there is no other fair value gap than this after a sweep. So we had, you consider this as your sweep or this one right here. Price started to go lower, going up. Fair value gap respected here, went lower. Then this candle kind of right here closed above it. This is an indication of a market structure shift. Price closing above the fair value gap, indication of a market structure shift. You can look for a lower time frame entry here or just enter from the fair value gap or just enter from the inverse fair value gap, 50%, whatever. Or, you know, we have a very small fair value gap just right here. Entry right here. Price literally going up and then fair value gap here respected. This is how powerful the inverse fair value gap is. It can give you an indication of an early market structure shift so you don't miss a lot of trades. What do we have here? The market structure shift is going to be right here and price doesn't go there. It simply goes up. If you spotted this inverse fair value gap, you got a good entry. Otherwise, price doesn't come back here. So here we comes the end of the video. I really put a lot of effort in order to simplify all of this. And I just want you to know that everything that I'm providing here today, especially in this video, this is my experience and my learning for years. I put it all for you in one video. So if you think you still don't get this, I try to simplify it in the simplest form ever. But still, you might go to the chart, see it yourself, ask me in the discord. And I just want you guys to appreciate all of what I'm doing by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you think it's a good video, make sure to share it with your friends. Join the Discord. We do live sessions there, educational seminars and other stuff. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.